Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily, where we work to keep you up to speed on the most important developments in the global automotive industry. Tesla released its financial earnings from last year, and while the company is still losing money, it's losing a lot less than it did the year before. Globally, the company sold nearly 22,500 cars. That's up about 1,000% from the year before. Revenue jumped to just over $2 billion, up more than 380%. In the fourth quarter, Tesla earned $13 million in fees from Toyota and Daimler, as well as $15 million in regulatory credits, but that does not include any zero emission credits. Despite that extra revenue, Tesla posted an operating loss of $61 million for the year, but that represents a massive improvement. The year before, it lost $394 million, and it posted a net loss of $74 million, but that's a big jump from the $396 million it lost in 2012. Tesla is forecasting that sales of the Model S will grow 55% this year, meaning this could be the year the company gets into the black. The market loves these improvements, and Tesla stock is flirting with $200 a share, giving the company a market capitalization of about $24 billion. Compare that to GM's market cap of about $57 billion, and GM is a company that sold 9 million more vehicles than Tesla did, but watch out, Merrill Lynch says Tesla stock really should be about $65 a share. Production in North America just hit its highest level for the month of January. That's the highest since 2003. In total, nearly 1.3 million vehicles were produced. That's up only 0.1% from last year, and most of the gain came from Mexico, which saw light vehicle production shoot up 2.3%. U.S. production was only up about 0.6, while Canadian production actually fell 5.4%. Yesterday, we gave you an update of the two-man bobsled results, which we're tracking because the U.S. team is using a bobsled designed by BMW's advanced studio, Design Works USA. Well, last night, the U.S. women took the silver and bronze in the same kind of sled, but the Canadians took the gold, showing that equipment is important, but Olympic competition still comes down to the athletes with the best abilities to perform under pressure. I'm sure a lot of us remember studded snow tires, but many states have outlawed studs due to them tearing up the roads. But one Finnish tire maker has come up with a concept that might fix that. Nokian has come out with what it calls a non-studded winter tire, but they have studs. With just the push of a button from inside the car, these tires automatically deploy studs from the tread. However, the company does not say how the studs are deployed. Seems like a pretty cool idea as long as the studs will last for a decent amount of time. Volvo is showing off connected car technology that allows people to have food or other products delivered directly to their car. The company created what it calls a digital key which allows the car to be opened via a smartphone or tablet. When a customer orders something online, he or she can give the delivery company a temporary digital key to drop off the product. Once that's completed, the digital key is destroyed. Customers can also track the deliveries with their smartphone or tablet. The idea behind the concept is to save people time and money. Volvo did a pilot program with 100 people 86% of them said the delivery service definitely helped them save time. If you blow out a tire in your four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive vehicle, did you know you're supposed to replace all the tires? We'll explain why on the AutoLine Garage coming up next. Here's one of the great things about the all-around performance of our jeweler tires. Excellent traction. Do you need a ladder? Yes, I do. Okay. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. Auto Line Garage is brought to you by Bridgestone. Your journey, our passion. 
With the winter vortex that has slammed the northern hemisphere, I'm sure it's left a lot of us wishing we had all-wheel or four-wheel drive vehicles. They offer much better handling and traction in icy and snowy conditions. But as Ziggy points out in the Autoline comments section, there is one major disadvantage when it comes time to replace a tire. You're supposed to replace all of them. Ziggy mentioned some friends that had blowouts with all the potholes that have opened up due to all this winter weather. And they were shocked when they were told that they had to replace all four tires on their all wheel drive vehicle even though only one was damaged and the rest still had good tread life remaining. Why? Well, all-wheel and four-wheel drive vehicles use additional differentials and or viscous couplings to allow for momentary differences in wheel speeds when the vehicle is cornering or if a tire spins. But if the tires are a different circumference from one another, it could trick the system into thinking that a wheel is spinning and continue to operate the all-wheel drive system 100% of the time, putting unnecessary stress on it. So it's very important that the tires are the same size, the same brand, at the same state of wear, and inflated to the proper pressure. Even so, there are some solutions to save you money. In some cases, it's not entirely true that you have to replace all four tires. Of the major all-wheel drive manufacturers, Audi recommends that the tires are within 430 seconds of one another in tread depth, while Subaru recommends 230 seconds. But if you're outside that specification, don't worry, there's still another solution. Tire truing, or also called tire shaving. While it's primarily used in racing, the same technique can be applied to a new tire to get it within the specifications of the old ones for about $25 to $35 per tire. So it's gonna be up to you if you wanna shave down a new tire or if it's just time to replace all of them. This is clearly a drawback to all wheel drive vehicles. But my real issue is how many people are uninformed about this when going to buy one of these vehicles? Ziggy even alludes to that in his post. I think automakers and dealers could do a much better job of informing their customers. Now, before I go, I'd like to send a special thanks out to Ziggy for his suggestion for this Autoline Garage. And if any of you out there have a suggestion of your own, please feel free to leave it in the comments section or send it to viewer mail at autoline.tv. That wraps up this Autoline Garage. I'm Sean McElroy. Hey, don't forget to join us for Autoline After Hours tonight. We'll be talking about a lot of things, but especially that union vote at the Volkswagen plant. Does this signal the beginning of the end of the UAW? And is Volkswagen going to open up the doors to another union so it can have the works councils in that plant? That and a whole lot more on Autoline After Hours starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time tonight on Autoline.tv. And that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.